actually COP11, uh, at least uh, scientists like me has been waiting or longing for to get a platform where we can interact and share our uh, ideas and views and our uh, uh, what you call as uh, the results of whatever research we have been uh, attributed to do with. And uh, I do have a lot of expectations from this uh, COP11 and more so with regard to giving certain messages which are really very much needed for the public, for the industry, for the pol politicians and as a whole the entire uh, planet needs to get some awareness from this kind of uh, platform. Aside from heading an educational institution, you've also been actively involved in research activities. What are the research activities pertaining to the climate change and biodiversity conservation that you have been taking up? Tell us about that. See, when we speak of uh, of late this term which is very alarming that is um, global or climate change and when we say climate change we equate it with the global warming and when we say global warming it is all to do with the heating and increase in temperature on this planet and of course I have found here that there are uh, many messages being given and the focus is there, the concerns, the challenges over the kinds of pollutions and man-made or anthropogenic activities of concrete jungles and all those stuff. But little concern is given on another very alarming effect of uh, human nature again, anthropogenic, that is what I would attribute to the electromagnetic radiations. This also is a very alarming cause and a causative agent which is responsible for global warming and of course health effects are adverse not only to human beings but also to our flora, the fauna which we are saying that they are getting extinct. So apart from other factors like pollutions etc, this is one of a silent pollutant which is alarmingly responsible for increase in the temperatures as well as having some adverse biological effects on these systems of fauna and flora. As you have asked me, let me tell you that we have a project, research project, we are into this kind of research on electromagnetic radiation and their harmful effects for the last two decades and there's a team of interdisciplinary activists in this where there are doctors, genetists and uh, biophysicists and this combined job is only to understand if so whether these electromagnetic radiations are really causing alarming effects on the body and thereby also increasing or are factors responsible for the increase in global warming. Now in this kind of study we are looking for the effects of extremely low electromagnetic radiations, high frequency electromagnetic radiations and medium. Now as we all know we are now almost in a sea or an ocean of electromagnetic radiations. True that the solar energy, the solar radiations are essential for this planet without which we all know no life would be there, no heart would beat, no mind would think, isn't it? And without which again, you know, as uh, we know that there is simply extinction of everything. But at the same time, these ma man-made electrical and electronic gadgets are also radiating some uh, you know, radiations which are intersecting with the natural radiations and these intersections are probably, probably responsible for the um, harmful effects. So we cannot do away at this point of time with the high frequency use of radio frequencies in the mobiles. Neither can we do away with our laptops or computers as well. But at the same time, a message which we would like to give from the team of our scientists which are working on a UGC sponsored project, major project, that Yes, we cannot do away with these electrical and electronic gadgets because electricity has become a part and parcel of our life. Mobiles are more than any other gadget which we carry with us every day from time, almost, you know, 18 to 20 hours we are associated with them. But at the same time, like how we are concerned about not to chop for the trees or, you know, not to go on constructing or going on for concrete jungles and how to conserve life on this earth. There are concerns about conservation, sustainability and one of such awareness program should be there. Okay, look, use these gadgets but with caution, with precaution. There should be a line drawn between use and abuse. Use them but with discrimination and don't expose to more of light at night time and more so in the urbanized places. We have to take more care about it.
What are the other research activities that um, you plan to take up or you've already recently taken up? Now, as of now, uh, we have a recent project. Earlier project, we have worked with the high tension wires and uh, then mobile radiations. And now we have a project which is to study the hormonal levels. We are talking about uh, live in harmony. We are forgetting hormones of our own body. So we are trying to explore the levels of uh, important hormones and um, how they are affected with this uh, light at night and uh, low frequency electromagnetic radiations and the incidences of breast cancer in women who are exposed to light at night and more of the electrical and electronic gadgets in the urbanized places. So this is our project as of now. Um, any 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 uh, uh, plans of taking up more of such interdisciplinary research work pertaining to climate change and global warming, as you said, in the in the coming future? Yeah, of course, very true. You know, uh, we would like to uh, you know uh, contact certain NGOs because funding is very important and. Plenty of um, epidemiological studies have to be done to come to a concrete conclusion because still there is controversy about whether or not these radiations are really harmful and all. But yes, the time has come where you know we can say that yes, it is statutory warning like you know don't smoke; it may be injurious to health. Like that, we can say that you know don't expose more. Anything in extreme is harmful. That's what we would like to state. And um, as you have asked, we are really seriously interested to contribute our humble uh, you know, results and findings to the mankind as any other contribution in this COP11.